Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the basic segment routing configuration with ISIS Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. In this example, we have a small topology you can see here, and we have a few different devices I want to talk about. First, let's talk about the devices in the provider core. R1 is a provider edge device, same with R3 and R4. R2 is just a P router. So it's just a provider router, so no customer device is connected to R2. With CE1, we have user one that's connected, and then CE2, we have server one that's connected, and CE3, we have server two that's connected. So we have three different sites that we want to worry about. And so we want to configure segment routing to support an L3 VPN between these three sites. They're all gonna be within the same VPN, and we need to use segment routing to facilitate communication. So what we are doing here is the IGP is ISIS, we know that. Uh, user one needs to communicate with server one and server two, and we're not gonna use any traffic engineering here. So this is just gonna be very basic, follow the shortest path segment routing. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this going. All right, so here is the CLI of R1, and we're going to also be working on R2, R3, and R4. So let's jump back to R1 and go into configuration mode. Now let's go to the protocols configuration and see what we have here. We can see we have BGP configured and we have ISIS configured, and that's great. Uh, let's check the ISIS adjacencies, and we can see that we are connected to R3 and R2, and so I'm not gonna go through and check every single one on the routers right now, but just keep in mind that ISIS is up and functioning. So what we need to do first is we need to configure MPLS. You have to have MPLS configured to use segment routing. I'm just gonna say interface all, that's a little lazy, but for the sake of time, I'm not gonna specify each interface. And then when you configure the ISIS segment routing, do ISIS source packet routing, and then we need to specify the SRGB, which is the source routing global block, parameters. And first we need to specify the start label. And we're going to start this at 5,000 and an index range of 1,000. So what does that mean? That means that we're going to start handing out labels at 5,000 and we can hand it out up to 5,999. Now that's not a ton of labels, but we are using a very small network here. If this was a production network with a lot more routers, we probably want to use a bigger range. And then we need to set the node segment ID. We're gonna set IPv4 index, and R1 is gonna use a node segment ID of one. And so that means that it's actually going to be assigned 5001. And you can see the protocol configuration. Everything looks good there. We have ISIS configured with source packet routing and MPLS configured for all the interfaces. And so the next we need to do is we need to look at the interface and make sure we have family MPLS enabled for the necessary interfaces. And so we do not, so we need to configure that. You know, for the two interfaces here, and we can commit the configuration. Now let's jump to R2. So with R2, I've already configured the interfaces with family MPLS and most of the protocol configuration. You can see here MPLS is already configured and ISIS is configured most of the way for source packet routing. I didn't feel there was a need to repeat this on every single router, but we do need to configure the source packet routing node segment ID for this router. We'll set that to two, so that gives this node, R2, a node segment ID of 5002. Let's commit that configuration. And the same thing for R3. I've already configured the interfaces. Just need to go to protocols and set the ISIS source packet routing node segment ID to a value of three. And that's gonna set a value of 5003 for the actual label. And same thing with R4. You can see here, set source packet routing node segment IPv4 index, set this to four. And of course that means it's going to be 5004. All right, so that's committed. So let's go ahead and jump to the VR device, which houses the different customer devices with routing instances and attempt to ping. And we do have communication, that's great. I like to use the detail tag to make sure I'm going out an interface and not pinging the local interface. All right, let's try 10.105.1.100. And again, we have communication, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and jump back to R1 and look at some segment routing information. So first, let's look at the INET.3 table. And 
And you can see here that we have routes to the three other devices in the network. We have R2, which is the 192.168.100.2. R3 is the dot three and R4 is the dot four. And you can see here, if you look at the first route, which is for R2, you can see there's no label being pushed. Now you might ask yourself, why is that? And the reason behind that is the default pin ultimate hot popping is enabled. And so that means that there's no reason to put a label on for traffic destined to R2 from R1 because R1 is supposed to pop that label. So it's not going to put anything on there for traffic destined to R2 from R1. Same with R3. That's also directly connected, but R4 is not. And you can see that with R4 that we're pushing a label of 5004. Remember, we set that node segment ID to 5004. So now we're pushing a label of 5004. And you can see that there's two possible next hops because there's two ways to get to R4 from R1. And so let's go ahead and jump to R4. Look at the MPLS route table. And you can see there is no label for 5004. You might ask yourself, well, why is there no label for that? We're putting on that label. And the reason behind that is, let's jump to R3. And you can see here at R3, 5004, it's a pop because of penultimate hop popping. So keep that in mind. R3 is going to pop it and then forward the traffic natively to R4. All right, so let's jump back to R1 and let's look at those CE routes. And we can see here that to CE2 from CE1, we're going to be using the Gigi000 interface and giving it a push of 20. And remember that is the route hanging off of R3. So that's directly connected. Now you might ask yourself, well, why is it pushing 20? I thought it was penultimate hop popping. And what's happening there if we jump to R3, we can look at the table and we can see that 20 label is a VPN label. So that's why it's being pushed to 20. And then R3 is going to pop that VPN label and forward it to the CE2 device. So let's look at the, the CE3 route. And you can see there's two different next hops. And that makes sense because there's two ways to get to R4. And if we look at the ISIS adjacencies, we can see that Gigi000 is towards R3. So we see that we're pushing 5004 because we're going to R4 and also pushing 49. Now 49 is going to be that VPN label. So let's jump to R3 and we can see 5004, it's going to be a pop. So we're going to pop the 5004 label off. And then on R4, if we look at that table, we can see that 49 is a VPN label. And we're going to pop that and then forward it to the CE3 device. The last thing I want to show you is the ISIS database. Let's look at R1 and then add the detail tag. And let's look at some information here. First, we can see the IPv4 index is one. And then we can see the size is 1000 and the label range is 5000 to 5999. And we can look at R2 from here, because remember the ISIS database is synced across all devices. And we see something similar. We see an IPv4 index of two, size of 1000 and label range 5000 to 5999. And I do also want to point out, it shows the adjacency segment IDs or SIDs as well. You can see here that you know there's two interfaces for R2 that's connecting to R1 and R4. You can see that there's an adjacency SID of 16 and also 17. And we can see that if we go back to R1 as well, we can see the adjacency SIDs of 28 and 29. And same thing with R3. It's not gonna look much different with R3. It's gonna be similar information and same thing with R4. So that brings us to the end of our learning bite. We demonstrated how to configure segment routing with ISIS and also demonstrated how to verify segment routing with ISIS as well. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.